welcome to Serenity with Reverend Doctor, Dr. Reverend is my preference, Pamela June Banks Anderson, Senior Minister of St. Stephen's Community Church, United Church of Christ. Please join me in reciting the prayer for which this show is named. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. The primary purpose of Serenity is to share with you information and inspiration. If we are to have peace on earth and good will toward everyone, it must first begin with the individuals having peace and good will within. Today, my guest is Rabbi Michael Zimmerman. He is the rabbi of the congregation Kahilat, 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 Israel, located at Forest Road and Aurelius in Lansing. A couple of months ago, uh, Pastor Rabbi, not Pastor Rabbi, but Rabbi, yeah. <laughs> Rabbi and I uh, got together. We were introduced by one of the deacons of St. Stephen's, Deacon Pat. And she brought us together, and the energy was so phenomenal, and the connection mm -hmm. was so great, and the spirituality between the two of us was just off the chain. It was like we had been brothers and sisters uh, of the faith for many, many, many years. And so as a result of that conversation, we decided to see if we could bring the two congregations together. And we were successful in doing that, and at our first session, which we are calling the Reverend and the Rabbi. Uh, at our first session, we talked about uh, Jewish Christian relationships, our understanding of text in relation to God and, and uh, Jesus and the Gospels. We talked about diversity in terms of race and culture and welcoming. Uh, we talked about bridging the Jewish uh, African American cultural mm -hmm. gap. And we didn't get to the subject of same gender, same gender uh, couples in relation to the marriage equality, but we will get there uh, at some point. One of the outcomes of that time together, uh, Rabbi, and then I'm going to ask you to speak, is the idea of us having a joint Martin Luther King Jr. service, yes. and that will be held at the synagogue on January the 18th, Friday, and that will start at 6? 6, 6.15. 6.15. So now having gotten the uh, commercial, so to speak, out of the way, uh, tell us a little bit about you, uh, Rabbi. Introduce yourself. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your, your congregation. Tell us a little bit about how uh, you were led to become a rabbi, if this was something that was expected or something that was a surprise. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, thank you, Pastor. Yes. I think it was very much of a surprise that I ended up becoming a rabbi. Mm -hmm. I, I love to tell the story that after I, I decided to do this, um, I ran into one of my cousins at a family gathering who I hadn't seen for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. And she didn't say hello. She just looked me in the eye and she said, what do you want to do something like that for? Don't you want to be something useful like a forest ranger? <laughs> so now she said, did she pick forest ranger because somebody lived in the West or because... I don't know why. I mean, I, I, I think it would be wonderful to work for the Park Service. I think I'd really okay. enjoy that, but I'm, 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 not, I'm not very good with saws and hammers and that kind okay. of thing, so I ended up doing this instead. But. Okay. So when did you sense, uh, you, you know, in the African-American tra tradition, we call the, what we're talking about a call to ministry. So, so w when did you sense, uh, when did you sen sense Yahweh's hand on you, drawing you, into this profession that uh, that you that we would call a calling to be a rabbi. I had a very remarkable spiritual experience, and this was in Germany, in Berlin. Uh, my my wife and I were living in Europe at the time, mm -hmm. um, 
and we attended a workshop in family systems dynamics, in, uh, which was developed by uh, Bert, Bert Hellinger, who's a former Catholic priest, and he's, he's, he's very interested in the whole biblical phenomenon of giving, giving blessings, giving birthright. And so one goes through one's family history enacted by other people who are in the group. And it can be very powerful, very transformative work. Um, there was a, of course, I was the only Jew in the group. I was the only non-German in the group, actually. Uh -huh. um, and it was the first experience I had had of people, should we say, from, from the post-Holocaust generation on the other side of the fence, who in many ways have deeper wounds than we do. Mm. I mean, it's one thing to... What do you mean by the other side of the fence? What does well, that mean? Well, I mean, people who are the children or the grandchildren of the perpetrators. I see. And when I saw the vulnerability, the damage, the self-shame, the self-loathing in people who are carrying this, I, re I realized that, um, that the pain, the struggles that we have are very, very complicated. Mm -hmm. uh, it is so easy in situations of victim and oppressor mm -hmm. to put all our sympathy in the victim, or if we are the victim, you know, poor, mm -hmm. poor us, uh, which ult ultimately I think is both the African American and the Jewish community understand is terribly s disempowering, mm -hmm. self disempowering, mm -hmm. and. It was it was it was remarkable to me to experience this level of vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And one of the one one of the young men in the group refused to participate in any of the activities because it was just it was more intensity that he could handle. Mm -hmm. And when it came to my situation, I said, "You are going to enact my grandfather, who uh, who who had been a decorated." A war veteran in the First World War, fighting in the German army, mm -hmm. and was then killed in Theresienstadt. Okay. Um, and he really embraced this. And in embracing this, at one point in this exercise we did, he looked me in the eyes and mm -hmm. he said, are you going to go back into the world as a Jewish man? Do you have the courage to really affirm that you are a Jewish man? This, yes. this put me on a path which led us to making tours not both of the, uh, the shtetl, the little uh, Jewish community areas where my ancestors had lived, but also we went to two of the concentration camps, mm -hmm. to, to Auschwitz and to Theresienstadt. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, this all really put me on a path of very, very deep spiritual connection mm -hmm. with with Jewish tradition, with Jewish heritage, with Jewish people and culture, which then kind of led step by step by step to my becoming a rabbi. That is absolutely phenomenal. As you were speaking, Rabbi, it occurred to me that in the recesses of my soul, it is my hope that one day the African Americans in America will adopt a similar attitude of that of our Jewish brothers and sisters, which is never again. Unf as I hear you talk about stepping up to the plate, doing your history work, I am ashamed to say that there are many African Americans, many black people in America, who have the attitude, I have lost nothing in Africa, number one. Number two, are not interested enough to do what the late Alex Haley did, mm. and and that is to find Roots. some root, of course, in 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 the motherland, and and number three, uh, let me say on the on on the other side of, the, of 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 this comment that I am so proud of people uh, of churches like Trinity United Church of Christ in Chicago, Illinois, whose motto is unashamedly black and unapologetically Christian. And it is from experiences like that, uh, even, even at St. Stephen's, we have an African Heritage Sunday. Mm -hmm. and, and we also send out a weekly 
newsletter that we call the Habaragani. So that we do, but so we are in touch. And every every year we have a Kwanzaa service, and so we are in touch with with our African roots. But we are a minority within a minority. And then I also wanted to make the observation mm -hmm. that unlike the perpetrators of the Jewish Holocaust, we don't have descendants of the slaveholders saying, wait a minute, you know, my generation is responsible for my foreparents bringing Africans to America and enslaving them. So how, I, you know, we, we talked about the, the Jewish and the slavery Holocaust and how we can bridge this cultural gap so that African Americans and blacks and descendants of slaves in particular can, ha can, can, bridge, can become united around our common experience in our separate Holocaust experience. Because that's what the Jewish community has done. It has taken the Holocaust experience and saying, okay, this is how we can pre prevent this from happening again. First of all, we're gonna educate ourselves about what happened. And we're gonna own up to that. You know, second of all, we're going to make sure that our children get that history because we're going to pass it on. And, and then you have your own, you know, food you know, the kosher food. Uh, we have soul food that's killing us. <laughs> you know, high blood pressure and sugar diabetes and cholesterol. Well, we've you know. moved away, too, from, you know, the old the chopped liver and the kishki and the schmaltz <laughs> and all that. You know, we, I, I mean, na na nowadays, you know, the, the, the contemporary Jewish food is much more likely to be hummus and, sa and you know, yes. very light salads yes. and salmon. And, sure. But... Yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> so, so how did you end up here in, in Lansing, from, from Germany um, to Lansing? W were you a student in Germany? Were you visiting uh, uh, Germany? Were you called to become a uh, rabbi while in Germany? And, and well, we were living in the Netherlands. Okay. Um, and, and, you know, putting a lot of things together where, where I was in my life, at that point, and I wasn't young. I was in my 40s at the mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. um, That's young. It, well. <laughs> it may not be the 20s, well, but. I mean, it's, it's younger than I am now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But just all, all of the pieces fell together. Mm -hmm. um, I found the school, the seminary, where I eventually studied through a web search. Um, and I was immediately drawn to uh, a very small stream of Judaism called Reconstructionism. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a fairly contemporary movement. I um, actually never got established as a formal Jewish movement until the 1960s, even though its, um, um, it's ritual and cultural roots go back to the 20s. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's a very outside-of-the-box kind of movement in that we... We, we empower small communities. We don't, we don't have, um, you know, huge congregations which, with, with big staffs and all the trimmings and all that. We, we, um, we, our, our members take a lot of power, a lot of control over what happens. And we, we strive to celebrate tradition while at the same time knowing that we are living in a particular time and place and the words that we recite have to ring authentic to us mm -hmm. so we're not afraid to make changes in our in in our, in our liturgy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when i when we had the first the reverend and the rabbi event at the uh helot helot Kahilat Israel. Israel. I, I'll, I'll keep practicing until I get it correct. At the Kahilat Israel, one of the subjects that came up was the almost uh, heretic comment. And by the way, in my opinion, the only difference between a heretic and a hero is time. But the but the but the but almost uh, 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 a statement that would in 
some communities raised the ira of the community was the statement that everybody doesn't believe in God. And I've, I've interpreted that to mean in the same way. Or is it really? It, well, there's it, no question that everybody doesn't believe in God in the same way. Okay, but is there a and question we, we that have, some don't have, believe in God? Oh, absolutely. And, but yet serve the, the synagogue. And are very active members of the synagogue. Okay. What does that mean? Is that because of the way the haters have pres the haters of the faith have 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 used God and have have used the the Torah and have used the the Bible and have used the Quran to 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 spew uh, hatred to 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 call for war uh, the Crusades the the Jim Crow of the South the uh, the just just the the denigration of the the gay lesbian bisexual community that 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 we've used sacred writings to do this do you think that that's that people are saying i don't want that kind of a god in my life or are they just saying well i just think that there is no higher power that there is no intelligent design that we are here and when we're gone, we're gone. What What is the difference between I don't believe in God and I don't believe in your God? Well, I think I think different people will slice that very different ways. I mean, I think there's, I would agree with you that the, the abuse of the name of God, the concept of God, the concept of religion, throughout history and especially i mean in 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 american history and in contemporary american society it has just gotten so rampant mm -hmm. you know that um the 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 that god becomes a word that needs to be uh inserted into the 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 platform of one of the of of the national parties to show how you know because that's if if they if they if the other party says you haven't used the name of God, then that will cost some votes. Mm. You know, it's what kind of a game are we playing? Yeah. You know, does this does this make us more righteous? Does mm -hmm. this make us more loving? Mm -hmm. Does it make us mm -hmm. more willing to embrace the the stranger and and the mm -hmm. orphan and the vulnerable and the immigrant and the vulnerable people in mm -hmm. our midst? Not mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so so yeah, there are people who are totally immersed. In, well, in our community, within a Jewish way of life, because Judaism is not fundamentally a religion. Mm. We're a people. My goodness. Yeah, and and um, and 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 the religion is certainly an integral part of our Jewish heritage, of mm -hmm. our Jewish culture, and all. Mm -hmm. Not everybody buys into it, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. They're st they're still welcome. So if if Jews are a people and not a a faith based um, organization per se, we're not a faith based organization. I shouldn't say that too loud because it has implications for for subsidies and all of that. Okay. And, and we, we still want to be what we want to qualify for those. But right, right, right. But, uh, but but I don't think we would really, at the end of the day, call ourselves a faith based organization. But if I wanted to become a Jew, and I am not born Jewish. Yeah, you can convert to the religion. Well, I'm not, I am not going to convert to Judaism. St. Stephen's Community Church, I'm sorry, I am one, your pastor. One, okay. One can convert to the religion. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> oh, certainly I'm not talking about you. Okay, okay. And 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 so tell me about that process. How does how does that happen? How does a person convert into Judaism who has not been born into the nation? It's 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 a matter of of study, fairly okay. comprehensive study is one piece of it, but just a study sp spiritual practice so one can develop their own authentic relationship to Judaism is just not learning how it's supposed to be, but really what is this for you, mm -hmm. and very important for us is a whole level of engagement in Jewish community mm -hmm. that because we we. We, we are a people 
you know, it's not enough that if somebody says, well, you know, I, 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 I like your books, I like your philosophy, mm -hmm. uh, so, so I want to I wanna be part of your religion. Mm -hmm. That's okay, but if you do that, realize that you're also buying into a people with, you know, what, what, whatever, whatever is distinctive, whatever, you, you know, you might love about it, whatever you might not like about it so mm -hmm. much, but, but, but to really be part of that. And mm -hmm. under traditional Jewish law, once somebody is converted to Judaism, they need to be welcomed and embraced to exactly the same degree as anybody who was born Jewish. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can an individual be both Jewish and Christian? Um, officially, not. There have been articles now, nowadays with some of the hybridization that's going on. I, I mean, I've seen articles that there that there are phenomena, it's, it's coming up more in some congregation that there are people there who describe themselves as Jewish Christians. Mm -hmm. um, that's pretty cutting edge. Mm -hmm. um, maybe, maybe the answer will be different in another 10 or 15 years or so. Okay. I mean, as we see it now, it would be, it's very difficult. Okay. And I'm, a, I'm, I'm afraid, um, unfortunately, the relationship of the Jewish people to Christianity, to Jesus, and the like, is such a different experience and understanding mm -hmm. than it is for, for the Christian community mm -hmm. that it's hard to, for people to understand and to hear. Mm -hmm. All of the long, long history that we have endured of, of, of the most vicious persecution because uh, torture, uh, death, forced conversions, because here we are, the people of the Old Testament mm -hmm. who somehow didn't make the step to embracing Jesus as our Savior, and we're still there. Mm -hmm. We've been around for a long time, and it looks like we'll be around for... For a long time. For, for, for a <laughs> long time. And, and what is the difference between the, the Reconstructionist, as you call yourself, and the Progressives? Well, in America, there isn't really a movement called the Progressives, I and mean, we're all kind of part of, like, there's a World Union of Progressive Judaism. There's a Reform, a Conservative, and an Orthodox are, can, are, are the main, the, the three large movements within Judaism. Um, the simple answer is that our ritual is somewhere between the Reform and the Conservative, but, uh, but socially we're extremely, we're probably more progressive mm -hmm. than the reform. Okay. Um, we, we, we have a lot in common with both movements, mm -hmm. but basically our, our practice tends to be more flexible, there's more, there, there's greater variety between one Reconstructionist congregation and the next, and there might be, say, between one conservative reform and, and, and the next. Um, Yeah, I'd say probably more, 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 more a sense of we're not inheriting Judaism, mm -hmm. we are care, we are creating Judaism. Okay. We are um, one of the core words in our in our theology is evolving. Mm -hmm. Judaism has been evolving since mm -hmm. since day one, mm -hmm. and we are on the crest of that evolution. Mm -hmm. I invited you to give the recitation of the Ten Commandments at my installation to the gathered community in Hebrew. How did that feel to you, being in, you were the only uh, Jewish person in the building, uh, the only rabbi on the program, the only one to speak the Hebrew language in a English uh, environment, for the exception of the other person that did the Christian, what I call the post-Hebrew lesson in Spanish. But how does that feel when you are the only one in a setting that mistakenly accuses the Jews of killing Jesus? And I think that we just need to resolve that once and for all, that Jesus was killed by the Romans and not by the Jews. But anyway... How did that feel to you? 
you know, I think we've been we've been locked into a lot of old stories for a very long time. You know, tradition, narratives, and all, it's, they support us on a powerful level. Um, sometimes, especially if we're too literal with them, they can really get in the way. Okay. And um, I don't buy that story. Mm -hmm. And I assume that the people who embrace me in their midst don't buy it either. Okay. So where are we, you? You know, we've we've got we've got more important narratives yes, to be to be busy with. Mm -hmm. You know, as 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 you say, we're dealing with serious issues of yes. of a broken world that we're living in, of, mm -hmm. of hatred, of oppression. How we have all been been hurt by our by our diversity instead of celebrating and affirming mm -hmm. our diversity. We're we're kind of getting near the end. I, I, this this is going too fast for me, so I'm going to ask if you will consider uh, coming back and uh, maybe even. Well, now that I know where to park it, <laughs> <laughs> maybe we'll even widen the table and uh, include uh, some other voices uh, as we talk about the coming closer in our culture between African Americans and the, uh, the African-American nation and the Jewish nation and how we can, how the African-American community can be encouraged to, to, to find our roots to the, to the best of our abilities and to embrace uh, our heritage. And in America, what that means is just, okay, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the descendant of a slave. As a matter of fact, my father, uh, God rest his soul, was the son of a slave. So my mm. grandparents, my grandmother, because I don't know who my grandfather was, hmm. on my wow. father's side, my grandmother was a slave wow. on the Varner Plantation in Sunnyside, Georgia. And I have been tempted many times to go to the plantation. I have met the, the descendant of the plantation owner. And at that time in my life, uh, it unnerved me so that after I met him, I just I just walked out. I did not have the maturity to handle a conversation with young Mr. Varner, but I do intend uh, to find out which country, as close as possible, uh, that I've because I think that is important. If you don't know from whence you've come, you really don't have a clear understanding of where you are. And I look at the past as I look at my canceled checks. There's, it doesn't make sense to go back and try to rewrite uh, the check, but I might have to go back for the IRS to prove yeah, exactly. that, I, that I did write that check, right, Brother Prince? But, and so that's what I think of when I think of going back. I think of going back and getting the evidence uh, of who I am and from whence I've come. And so we will need, I will want to have further conversation with you uh, about this. And yeah, well, I mean, I, I know that my paternal grandfather, who died before, shortly before I was born, um, when, whenever anybody wanted to ask him about his experience in Lithuania, you know, his response, <laughs> you know, kind of, everything was horrible and, you know, yes. just glad to be out of there and don't want to say a word about it. Yes. And, there w and this was, you know, there was a whole generation that this was their attitude. So we have had the difficulty, too, of trying to piece together, you know, stories, you know, places that had been occupied by, by the Nazis and the Holocaust, that had mm -hmm. been under Soviet rule for all these years, mm -hmm. archives that had been destroyed, cemeteries that had been desecrated. Yes. It is, it's, you know, we're, we're, we're all working on that. I think just the intention mm -hmm. is very powerful. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and there you have just a little bit of how exciting it is to be a part of a conversation with the Reverend and the Rabbi, and we hope that you will uh, come and uh, be a part of our next event, which will be January the 18th at, at 6 p.m. at the Kahilat. 615 Kahilat Israel. 615 Kahilat Israel, uh, congregation at the corner of Forest and Aurelius. Uh, we will be having a repast. We will be having conversation about how we can put the cultures 
uh, uh, close the gap between the two cultures. So thank you for joining us today. We look forward to visiting with you again and hope you will include in your daily prayers. God grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Pastor. May the God of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rachel, uh, Jacob and Rebecca be with you until we meet again. And to the audience, serenity. <laughs>